Hello, my name is Dr. Tia Higano. I'm here from ASCO virtually with Dr. Neil Shore, who presented the HERO trial earlier today. Dr. Shore is the director of the Carolina Urologic Center in Myrtle Beach, South Carolina. And he's going to walk us through the key aspects of the HERO trial. Neil? Hey, thanks very much, Tia. What a what a wonderful privilege to speak with you, given all the work, great work you've done in GU Oncology. Uh, I'm uh, exceptionally happy to tell you about the HERO Phase Three trial on behalf of all the investigators and the, all the folks around the world who participated. This was a Phase Three trial, Relagolix, an oral GnRH receptor antagonist versus luprolide acetate uh, for the treatment of advanced prostate cancer. Our, our, our study schema, which I'm showing you now, we looked at over 900 patients. There was a two-to-one randomization. Uh, Relagolix, which is an oral daily medicine, one day 360 milligram loading dose, three pills, and then uh, one pill once a day with or without food versus a luprolide IM sub-Q injection every three months. Uh, the primary endpoint uh, was testosterone suppression through 48 weeks. Uh, key secondary endpoints included uh, profound castration, testosterone uh, levels at day four, day 15, uh, as well as uh, corollary PSA values and FSH suppression at, at week 24. And we had a subset of patients that we looked at with a testosterone recovery. And very importantly, we looked at cardiovascular events as well and, and the full throttle of a of safety profile. The key inclusion were essentially patients in these three buckets, uh, either uh, patients who had uh, PSA biochemical relapse, uh, de novo uh, hormone sensitive metastatic disease, or advanced uh, localized disease. And you can see some of the exclusion criteria which are listed here as well. Uh, the demographics between the two arms, very balanced, uh, approximately an elderly population uh, uh, and median age around 71, 72. Uh, it was a global study, uh, a good contribution from Asia Pacific, uh, Europe and North America, and a smaller contribution from, uh, from Latin America. Uh, we see uh, the typical um, uh, racial uh, uh, variations uh, as well. The clinical characteristics, uh, as I previously mentioned, the three uh, buckets of biochemical relapse, newly diagnosed, uh, antigen-sensitive metastatic disease, advanced localized disease, very nicely balanced. The median PSA of, of approximately uh, 10. Uh, median testosterone levels patients started, they were all eugonadal. Of note, and very importantly, uh, in terms of cardiovascular risk factors, over 90% uh, of patients in both arms had risk factors. They were either lifestyle risk factors uh, or cardiovascular cerebral vascular risk factors. And there was a history of MACE, uh, a major adverse cardiovascular event, which would, it, by definition is a non-fatal uh, prior uh, MI or stroke. Uh, and interestingly, data would tell you that in senior data and parts of the world, um, that that MACE rate, uh, history of MACE, could be upwards of 30 to 40 percent, depending upon uh, where in the world the, and the eating habits and uh, exercise uh, uh, modalities that people endure. But we care, we're, tr we, we're very cautious to screen out and, and uh, prevent as many of those patients as possible from coming into the study. Our primary endpoint, as I said, was um, uh, T suppression through week 48. And what you see here, and it's a little bit of a busy slide, but the bottom line was uh, Relagolix uh, achieved testosterone suppression in 96.7% of patients, the lupulide arm, 88.8% .8 of patients. That's in just a T level of less than 50 nanogram per deciliter. Uh, and so we made the primary endpoint criteria and the lower bound of the 95% confidence interval, if it was greater than 90%, uh, would it, uh, therefore achieve the superiority threshold, uh, which was uh, at a negative 10% for the non-inferiority margin, which we did achieve. And therefore, we were able to say that not only did we reach non-inferiority, but then also superiority compared to the luprolide arm. Key secondary endpoints, as I've mentioned, include uh, profound testosterone suppression, which would be a, a level of less than 20 nanogram per deciliter. And we looked at this at day four and day 15 and uh, corollary PSA values. 
and of note the mean FSH level on both arms at week 24. All of these were in favor of the Relagolix arm, and you can see with um, a, a really uh, highly statistically significant p-values. This slide shows you the superphysiologic surge that you see in testosterone with luprolide administration, which you don't see with an antagonist, uh, oral, uh, uh, oral relagolix. Um, there's a truncation of the timeline, as you see between weeks four, 17 and 45. And you'll see that the um, line is starting to go up in the orange representing um, uh, relagolix. And what that is, is uh, that's when patients in a subset of 184 patients came off drug, relagolix or luprolide. And what we see here, and this, this is uh, uh, amplified, is that 54% of patients in the relagolix arm achieved, achieved a eugonadal testosterone level by three months, as opposed to 3% of patients in the luprolide arm. So rapid T recovery was a, a, a really uh, uh, interesting finding. Uh, in terms of the adverse events, you see here greater than 10% reporting, uh, all relatively consistent, uh, no grade three, four events as they're related to anything in GI and otherwise balanced. The majority of these events, and I uh, would show later and we, as we published in our New England uh, Journal of Medicine article, which came online today, uh, a, a lot consistent with T suppression. But what was really uh, rather important, and I think extremely noteworthy, is the adverse cardiovascular events. There was, in, in the entirety of the trial, 7.1% uh, with luprolide, 3.9% with relagolix. And the major adverse cardiovascular events, remember I said we screened and we lowered in our population to about 14%, where SEER data would tell you it could be higher than 30%. We saw a, a difference of 6.2% in the luprolide arm, 2.9% in the relagolix arm. If you basically break that down a little bit more and you say, okay, well, what about uh, patients who had MACE entering the trial on the relagolix and the luprolide arm? There was a nearly a, a six-fold odds ratio increase of having a MACE in the luprolide arm versus the relagolix arm. And even if there was no MACE, there was a one and a half times odds ratio of having another MACE in the luprolide arm versus the relagolix arm. And here's the Kaplan-Meier for the entirety of the, the, the patients in both arms, uh, showing a 54% reduction in the risk of major adverse cardiovascular events in favor of the relagolix versus the luprolide arm. So in conclusion, uh, the HERO trial met its primary and all key uh, secondary endpoints, uh, which were done uh, on a hierarchical basis, uh, a 96.7% achieved and sustained castration rate through week 48 and profound uh, suppression as well. Uh, Relagolix once daily oral therapy was well tolerated. The risk of major adverse cardiovascular events was 54% lower with Relagolix than Luprolide. Uh, really proud of all of our co-authors, as I said, our investigators, and we had the, the privilege and honor to be published online uh, today, uh, the opening of ASCO, virtual ASCO in the New England Journal. Uh, can, cannot say enough about all of the, the global participants that allowed for the study uh, to be successful. Thank you.